your basic radio circuit capacitor and inductor capacitor charges up coil charges up coil reverses charge reverses charge and capacitor it oscillates back and forth the electronic equivalent of a pendulum this is your basic radio circuit now for the Joe cell the concentric tubes act as an amplifier and that the signal has to bounce back and forth inside the tubes multiple times before being able to exit. This is known as a cantenna in the tech world. The tubes being concentric act as capacitors, so there's your capacitor component. And the tubes being alloy act as your antenna, so you have your antenna and your capacitor with the component that is missing when you run your Joe cell in a laboratory format of trying to seed the cell is the ignition coil. When you connect the positive outer tube to the positive of the ignition coil, what you're doing is you're adding a coil in line with your circuit. Same as the radio. What Joe is able to do, Joe Brooks, the uh, original inventor, uh, is able to do with the cell is he's so good at making them that he's able to make them to the proper frequency specs without the coil. Um, original radios were nothing more than a spark gap before they had these components to tune to a particular frequency. So with this coil in here we have a broad spectrum radio that's able to absorb a lot of frequencies, a lot of background radiation that puts the water to the right frequency. Why that is important? Uh, if you remember the Suzuki video and he had the engine running with the coil shut off and connected somewhat in this fashion. Uh, that, that engine, if you notice the spark, Joe kept referencing how the, the spark changed when the engine started running on the frequency that he's able to generate to get the cars to run on. And that is, if you have the right frequency, the car will run on inert gas, the atmospheric air, as opposed to a combustible fuel the tr traditional frequency that it runs on. I don't know if, how many of you guys have seen the video where uh, Joe was arcing a spark to the air conditioner of a car and he said watch this and he built the spark up to about I think it was two inches or something and the spark changed color and once it got to just the right color which is to say it's at the right wavelength, the right frequency the engine shut off and it was because he had generated combustion inside of the uh, air conditioner compressor in the car and that countered the d power direction that the engine was running in. It tried to counter it and it overloaded the engine in idle and shut it off. So if you have the right frequency you can make an engine run on the inert air, air that uh, is in the atmosphere. But what's missing from everybody's Joe cells that tries to just run them just out of any tubes that they throw together that aren't the right dimensions, that aren't the right length, diameter, uh, consistency of metal, all these things that Joe knows, you have to have the coil attached in order to have a broad enough range of frequency to get the right frequency into your ignition system in order for it to start running on atmospheric air. So the mystery all the mystery and all the bizarre behavior of the Joe cell, if you start looking at it in terms of a radio, will suddenly make sense. So everything that we've been postulating as to whether the Joe cell is orgone energy or aether energy or zero point energy, the Joe cell is nothing more than a radio receiver that is capturing the right signal, the right frequency that is able to fire inert gas in a cylinder. There you have it.